I wonder if we could lift our hands and surrender to our God. God, we surrender to your will. We surrender to what you want to do in this place. God, not our will, but thy will be done in us.
in a song right now. But let it be the cry of our heart. God, all you want is more of us. All you want is relationship with us, Jesus. We give you access tonight, God, to all of our heart, everything in me, the things that we hide, the things we keep under lock and key. God, we give you permission right now to reach in, to reach into us, oh God. We surrender, God. tonight we don't need to get in a hurry this is what God wants from us he wants our surrender he wants our time he wants our heart I wonder if you can lay it all before him tonight he's reaching for somebody tonight he's reaching for you tonight from the Lord. Come on, let's just shut out everyone around us right now and you receive what you need. Hallelujah. The window of heaven is open in this place right now. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. God, we trust you. travail that's pulling at somebody right now come on just slide into what God is trying to pull you towards right now hallelujah hallelujah Lord thank you Jesus for your presence Lord hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
That's it. Come on. Just pour your heart out to him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a long time for some. Come on. Just get what you need from the Lord right now. the sweet touch of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We love you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you're here with your family, why don't you just reach out to them right now and begin to pray for your family right now. Hallelujah. One with another. Come on, let's let the Lord use you, minister through you right now. God, I'm asking you to touch my family, God. Lord, let us have revival and strength in our home. Hallelujah. Any challenges, any problems, God, we surrender them all to you right now. Father, we give it to you, Lord. Let your glory move in our midst, God. God, bless our families, strengthen our families. Father, I pray that you would bring deliverance and healing and strength, Lord. God, we can't make it without you, Father. We need you right now. We need you right now. Strengthen us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us, O oh God. Hallelujah. Strengthen them, strengthen God. Strengthen, Lord. God, renew us in your spirit. Revive us, Father. Let your glory settle over us, O oh Lord. God, strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen us as families. God, I pray that you would strengthen us. Strengthen us, O oh God. God, let your glory.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Sing it with us. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Just reach out and touch him right now. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're unaccustomed to what's happening right now, I want you to understand the Spirit of the Lord has filled every one of these believers. Their lives are changed and they're reacting to something that's happening in the Spirit right now. If you'll just lift your hands, you're going to feel what we're feeling. The glory of the Lord is going to touch you. Come on. Hallelujah. This is our birthright. It's our gift from heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing right now. God, let your anointing, let your spirit move amongst us. God, we love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. God, you are faithful. You are so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessings to us, God. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't care which place I'm going to change it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, Lord. Move in this house right now. I wonder if we could just lift our hands to the Lord one more time in praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We... Hallelujah. Sing it together. Hallelujah. And all will sing how great, how great is our
lift up our voice now and tell him one more time, we love you. God, you are so great and awesome in all of your ways. Your mercy is without measure. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the grace that you bestow in our lives. Father, you are wonderful and marvelous. We worship you, Father. We love you today. Amen, amen, amen. Our God is so great. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. There's a sweet touch of God's presence here. Amen. I wonder who loves the Lord the most here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Amen. May the Lord bless you. You may be seated. Amen. To all of our guests that are here, we're not going to welcome you right now, but I just want to say it is good to have you here. And uh, welcome to a Sunday night at the Pentecostals. We're getting back to normal, getting back to apostolic church, and it's good to see everyone here on this rainy Sunday evening. And uh, I'm so thankful for God's keeping power and uh, thankful for a roof that doesn't leak, thankful for a church where folks are here, and thank God for great worship. And uh, thank you to all of the praise team and everyone that's leading us in praise and worship. And uh, I just feel good in the Holy Ghost today. Amen. God is so good. Why don't you just kind of turn around and give somebody the, uh, the uh, sign language, I love you. That's what that means right there. Amen. This one means hook them horns. This one means I love you. Just kind of turn around and give somebody an I love you. Let them know you love them. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Can we, clap to the, can we clap our hands to the Lord one more time, please? Hallelujah. Has God been good to you this week? Amen. Has God been your provider to you this week? Has God been your protector? Has God been your healer this week? Amen. He's worthy of every praise. How many said amen? Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad to be part of a church that takes pride on the, on the presence of the Holy Ghost and so sensitive to the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's what I love about our church. We're so, we like the presence of God here all the time. And God is not done here tonight. How many say amen? He's not done here tonight. So whatever you came here tonight, if you came as an expectator, I know you're going to receive some from God here tonight. So you might as well worship the Lord here tonight. How many say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. This time we want to we wanna welcome everybody here at the Pentecostals of Katy. If this is your first time or second time, visiting us. If you did not get a first car, first time or second time card, if you will raise your hands, our usher will get that to you. Uh, also, at this time, we want to welcome our online audience and those who listen to our Revival Radio. Why don't we clap our hands to those who are watching online right now. We won't be shaking any hands, but you can turn to your neighbor and tell him, hey, I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord here tonight. Amen. Also, if you need, uh, at this time, we're going to go into the offering. At this time, if you need an envelope, our ushers are, wa are walking through the uh, auditorium right now. If you need an envelope for your offering or tithing at this time, uh, we, you can give. There are several wells here to, to give here at the Pentecostals. You can give by cash or checks. Uh, if you raise your hands, there's also uh, kios in the back. You can give electronically as well. But if you raise your hands, they're over here uh, around. At this time, we'll have some, uh, we have some announcements. As you notice, we, uh, we're under construction. How many appreciate what God is doing for us in this time right now? Amen. Please be cautious in the, in the foyer area and around the construction area and the lobby and the restrooms. Uh, the restrooms over here are not able to use, but there's restrooms in the back uh, behind the Spanish Sanctuary by the Youth Sanctuary. You can use uh, those as well. Uh, next Sunday, September 27, we'll have baby dedication in the a.m. and 10 a.m. service. If you, if you have a baby, you want to dedicate your baby on 27, September 27, we'll have the baby dedication service. Please see uh, Sister Pamela Correa if you need any more information about that as well. Also, uh, October 1st through the 3rd, Zion Music Conference. Amen, huh? How many of us are excited about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll have nine services. We'll be free starting on October the 1st through the 3rd. Nine services will be free. Please come and join, join us for this powerful service. I know God is going to move in a mighty, powerful way. How many believe that? Amen. At this time, we'll dismiss the choir as well. If you're part of the choir, you'll be dismissed. One more la last announcement. Tonight, we'll need a couple of men. If, you, if you're available tonight after service, uh, we'll need some uh, men after service to move some stuff around. They're going to paint 
I believe some of the area here in the back. So we need some men that can help us move some of this stuff around. If you have 10, 15 minutes after service, we would appreciate it if you can stay and, and help us clean that up. At this time, can we stand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer for our offering and tithing at this time. Ushers, can you come? They're already here. Let's go to the Lord and pray and thank him for what he's done already in this week. Lord, we give you praise and honor at this time, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for an opportunity to give back to your kingdom, Lord. Thank you for an opportunity to give back what you already gave to us, Lord. We give back to you, Jesus. Use it for your kingdom, for you. I've asked him your kinder. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bring your tithing and offering to the front.
You'll give them the glory. You'll give yourselves the glory. But we have to understand that the battle, the victory, belongs to Jesus. Victory is the Lord's. We do our part. We obey the Lord. We worship. We turn it over to Him. But the victory and the glory is the Lord's. Can someone give the Lord glory for the victory right here? All right, here we go.
nothing quite like the name of Jesus. I feel good in the Holy Ghost. It feels like Sunday night around here. I know some of you still need to loosen up a little bit, but we're getting there. Amen. Uh, There's nothing like just letting the Lord renew you and revive you in a time of worship. I love Sunday nights at the Pentecostals. Amen. Praise God. Just feels good. Amen. God bless you. If you love the Lord, you may be seated. If you don't love the Lord, I'm glad you're here tonight. Not sure why, but glad you're here. 
Amen. And uh, we're, we're so glad to have each of you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. It just feels good being in God's house. And um, I want to join in with the rest of the team. Say it's good to have all of our guests here this evening. And good to see each of you in the house of the Lord. You know, uh, distractions are, uh, are part of life. But I've never seen a year where there has been more distractions to the will of God in the lives of his church. And uh, they, they have abounded this year. And it's so easy to get our eyes off of what our purpose is. But I'm thankful people are kind of coming back around and, and we're, we're getting refocused again. It's very important that we keep our minds on the Lord and our, our minds stayed on God. And so coming, being faithful to the house of God's part of it. Being faithful in prayer, being faithful in tithing, being faithful in your giving, being faithful in your prayer life, and uh, reading the Word of God. Every part of our Christian experience is, is so important. And so I want to challenge you, have a personal revival. You can have a revival any day of the month and just decide that starting today, things are going to change. Amen. It's good to see everyone here. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Rob McKee. I'm the senior pastor here at the Pentecostals. And... Um, Amen. That sweet, beautiful lady that was just leading us in, uh, in the, the choir and worship is my wife, Sharon. We're thrilled that you're here with us this evening. We had, uh, I guess, three great services this morning, uh, two in English and one in Spanish. And um, uh, God is, is, has, is in this place tonight. I believe he's going to meet with us in a beautiful way. Uh, for those of you that have never been here before, I know they mentioned it before, but I want you to please pardon our dust. We're... we're uh, we're doing our best to um, uh, improve and to be better. The purpose of our remodel, all the construction going on out in the foyer is to make more room, first of all. We need more room because, again, uh, you know, people come to the service and they connect with God, but out in the foyer is where they connect with, with the church. And uh, research says that if someone doesn't make a connection in seven visits to a church, the chances of them being uh, never coming back is somewhere around 92, 93 percent that they will not return. And so uh, we understand that connection with the body is important. And so that's why we're investing uh, in this. And it's not about just updating things for the sake of updating them. But we want to make sure that our foyer uh, makes a good impact in, in all of our guests that attend. And uh, there's plenty of room out there. And we want it to be to make a good impression and be a place that we can connect with the body. So uh, we've got a lot of things that are happening in the next couple of weeks and uh, getting ready for, um, you know, we, what we typically do is we, we have these plans to do things and then we try to set a start date and, and, um, uh, and kind of work towards it. But the only way we can accomplish everything we need to is by, with your help. It's impossible for one or two people. They say the average church in North America that, that uh, roughly um, uh, 10 to 20 percent of the people do uh, somewhere around 80 percent of the work in the church. And uh, I, I, I don't know if that's exactly true in every congregation, but I, I can tell you that God has allowed us to do some great things because of the the unity that rests in our church and people have a mind to work and I want to say thank you uh, we throughout this week I know we've mentioned it already but throughout this week we will have construction but it's mostly skilled labor so uh, sheetrock if you have experience in sheetrock uh, framing uh, electrical plumbing any of those uh, fields uh, please stop by we will have some jobs if you have time you want to come up uh, some other things that are unskilled labor that you can come up and help with it's, it would be a tremendous ministry and then of course um, uh, next Monday a week from tomorrow night we're having a church wide old fashioned church wide work night and so we've got a lot of tasks a lot of little things that everybody can do we're just kind of getting it all ready and uh, we'll get a whole lot done that night. So we're asking, please put that on your, your schedule uh, a week from tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. And we will have a church-wide work night. So, amen. Uh, I'm so thankful for all the things that are upcoming. We have our Zion Music Conference. I think this is year, what, 7, 6, 7, something like that, roughly. 
eight, year eight. And we've had our music conference. For those of you that have never attended uh, Zion Music Conference, it is uh, probably one of the largest, if not the largest, music uh, attended music conferences um, in North America. We have folks that register from everywhere. I'm talking about in the apostolic ranks. But we have folks that register from all over the U.S. and attend, and uh, even Canada. We've got folks that, that fly in from uh, uh, from other countries, and we're so uh, honored that we could host something like this. It does us no good just to come together and enjoy music. We want to be a blessing. This is not some money maker for us. That's not why we do it. We do it so that we can be a blessing to uh, other congregations and help churches. Our focus uh, is mostly on the uh, church you know, anywhere from 50 to, you know, 100 or even less than that. And, uh, and those, that's mostly what's represented. Most churches are under 150 that attend our music conference. And, but we want to be a blessing. We want to help them. Music is such an important part of our apostolic worship experience. And there's something about the glorious music, worship unto the Lord that just ushers us into the presence of God. And so all of that is coming up very quickly. All right, now, I said all that. I'm, I'm just kind of taking a little bit of time in case you're wondering, waiting for the choir to come back in. But I did want to mention that this coming Sunday, it's very exciting, this coming Sunday, we are relaunching uh, our, uh, our minister's class, and we are calling it for preachers only. Now, those of you that have been a part of MIT in the past, ministers in training in the past, uh, maybe you have attended before. This is going to be a bit different because we're dividing that class in, in two, into two different uh, classes. And here in just a moment, I'm going to let Dr. Wilson come and talk about um, one part of it. Uh, we are, we're having two classes. One is call, going to be called for preachers only, and this is for people that feel a call to the pulpit ministry. This is not a uh, leadership, even though we will be touching on some leadership issues. It is for preachers, okay? So specifically uh, for preachers, those that feel a call to the pulpit ministry. And then simultaneously at the same time, 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings from 9 to 9.30, not only will we be having our for preachers only class, but we will be having our leadership, um, lead, Christian leadership development class. And that uh, will be taught by uh, Dr. Wilson as well as my wife. Uh, of course, Dr. Wilson has his doctorate in strategic leadership. My wife has her master's in organizational leadership. Thank you. I knew it was leadership something. Didn't want to get it wrong. And uh, they will be um, tag teaming with that. Uh, occasionally, we may switch it out. And I may come over here and teach this. And then they may uh, teach over in the minister's class. But it's going to be uh, two great classes. I, I do want to tell you, we need you to register for it, okay? We need to know how many people are attending. And uh, especially for the minister's class, if you feel that burden, that desire to be a part of it, uh, we, need, we need to talk to you. And I want you to come and talk to me. And uh, we have a ministry covenant for all those that are a part of For Preachers Only. We don't want you just showing up saying, hey, what's going on? Now, uh, it's, uh, we, we, wanna, we want to uh, make sure that those that feel a call have an open door, okay? So it's not hard to get into, but we do, we do want you to come and talk to me and um, uh, just kind of tag in with me, or you can talk to uh, Brother Mayor, uh, Dr. Wilson, or even Brother Correa, one of these individuals, and they will get you a, um, a ministry covenant, and you can be a part of it. And so uh, very excited about that. That all kicks off this coming Sunday morning. So immediately following our 8 a.m. sunrise service from 8 to 9, the class will begin, okay? So I'm... Uh, those of you that know, um, I'm preaching the 8 a.m. service, and so as soon as that service is over with, I'm going to run over and, and uh, be a part of that class. And so we'll, we're going to try to end it a few minutes early, but we will, uh, we're going to have a, a, a tremendous time. And I will tell you this, for the minister's class, this coming Sunday, um, we will, uh, you know what, I, 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 if, if it's all right, I, I want to make call an audible right now. Why don't we do this? Since it's kind of new for a lot of people, why don't we just forego the ministry covenants for this coming week, and then I, we'll talk about them. I'll, I'll kind of go through them this coming week and kind of explain a little bit about them. But uh, if you want to be a part of it, just show up, okay? And uh, the locations for those classes. Do we have location? 
All right, for preachers only, we'll be upstairs in the uh, conference room, immediately out this door, up the stairs. You just keep walking to the left. If you walk to the right, you'll be in Brother Wilson's office, and it'll be lonely. Just, I guess you and him can hang out. No, you can't, because he'll be teaching another class. But uh, it, it's, uh, that will be in the conference room, so space is limited for that. But uh, that's where the preacher's only class will be, and the, ministry cl- uh, the uh, leadership class will be. So the new preteen class, and that will be uh, up these stairs right here down on the left. On the left, okay? So the stairs right out here, upstairs, uh, the last 14 doors on the left. I don't know how many doors we have in that room. But uh, one of the oh, three doors, okay. So just pick a door, any door, and uh, you'll either come out in the back or you'll come out on the platform. So surprise, surprise. So... Uh, <clears throat> Amen. So that's that's going to happen. But I, I just wanted to mention uh, this coming uh, Sunday, we'll be uh, starting it off first with an explanation of our ministry reco- covenant and our expectations. But then we're going to, going to be talking about seven things that every young minister should do. Seven things that every young minister. When I say young, I don't necessarily mean young as in age, but you're, uh, you're starting off in ministry. There's seven things that every minister should do. And uh, really, every minister should do them anyway, but these are seven things that will help you launch in ministry, and um, I believe that God will bless you through it. Amen. God is so good, and I'm so thankful. Um, Dr. Wilson was out of town last weekend ministering in uh, the, uh, the terrible state of Indiana, but we're glad that he is here today and back back in, in beautiful Texas. We want him to come. I want him to share with you a little bit about the leadership class, and then he's going to deliver the word of the Lord today. Put your hands together, and let's welcome Dr. Eugene Wilson. So um, the leadership development class, um, Christian the leadership development, we will be talking about how to build a team And um, in that subject, we will be addressing how to get everyone into alignment. They say that alignment is crucial in companies. The success of a company and being able to uh, execute its uh, strategy is dependent upon getting everyone into alignment. So we're going to talk about how to uh, get in alignment. And uh, this is also for those that are ministry leaders, the same thing, but how to get into alignment, even those that are difficult to work with. So uh, we're going to start a series uh, on this, and uh, we look forward to next Sunday. I, um, before I have you stand, I just want to simply say that, uh, first of all, it's good to be home. And I was home. That who, Indiana is where I was born and raised, so it was good to be with my family. But it's good to come home. And I uh, never dreamed that uh, years ago that home would be Texas. Now, my wife for our entire marriage has told me that she was a Texan. And uh, I always said that you you were raised in Indiana. You moved to Indiana when you were three years old, and you are a Hoosier. And she said, once you're born in Texas, you're always a Texan. And uh, she's told me that so many times. But, um, you know, I, I'm just going to be really transparent and just take a chance here just for a second. My, um, my wife, I should know this by now, but... I'm a slow learner on some things. And if I ever go to her and I say something like this, now, I want you to listen to me and I don't want you to get mad. As soon as I say those words, I don't want you to get mad. She's already ticked. Because she knows that what I'm getting ready to say is something that potentially is going to make her mad. So she's already on the edge. And you would think that I would learn not to do that. I still haven't learned that one. Every now and then I'll I'll start you know, qualifying my statements by saying, I don't want you to be mad. Well, I, I've noticed through the years that there are times when I walk to the pulpit that I say something early on about what I'm going to preach or what I'm not going to do or what I'm going to do, whatever it is. I say something early on, and all of a sudden, it just changes the whole dynamics of what I'm getting ready to say and everyone being able to receive it. So it always makes me a little nervous. But, um, you know, here we go again. Uh, slow learner here. And so uh, I'm going to take the chance and just simply tell you that I'm really nervous tonight. And uh, so there's my, um, there's my opening line. I'm nervous. And the reason is because the Lord has laid something on my heart 
um, a little over a week ago, and I can't get it out of my spirit. And I keep telling the Lord in so many words, like, God, I really don't want to preach that. I'd rather preach something different. And I know the choir is singing, and Zion Music Conference is coming, and, and Lord, they're, they're wonderful people, and the list just goes on and on and on. And I just can't get away from it. And so I had to convince myself I was going to preach something different. Got up this morning, and the Lord just kept redirecting me back. And then pastor preached, and when he preached this morning, um, in the spirit of what the Lord was dealing with me about, it was an exact same alignment in the spirit that he preached about. So I know I'm in the will of the Lord, but my personality is such that I, I, just, I, I just don't want to preach. I told my dad, I said, I really don't want to, and I said, 10% chance I preach tonight. And, and I was basing that off of the fact that I really just don't want to talk about what I'm getting ready to talk about. And um, so you'll understand here in a minute, uh, because I just, anyway, I need to stop and get started. Um, happy birthday, son. And uh, I don't often have that opportunity that when my son is on the keyboard and he's turning uh, 34 and uh, 2024. And uh, 24 years old, 24 years ago, we were new pastors, young pastors in East Tennessee. And Cade was, uh, we'd just soon pastor the church in the month of July. And then Cade was born in September. And it wasn't long after that we were living in the church. And Cade was riding his bicycle down the, the hallways and then going into the auditorium and banging on the drums. He was a drummer back then. I don't know if you all knew that or not. But about three years old, he found the sticks all the time. And he was always banging on the drums. And he probably plays the drums about the same as he did when he was about three years old. And uh, he plays all kinds of things, but I haven't heard him play much of the drums, but I uh, give honor to my son tonight and, and um, happy birthday. Hey Amen. would you stand with me, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter four. And uh, in and, and all sincerity, if, if some of you that are praying, our prayer warriors would just pray for me tonight and, and just, I just want to just simply, this is my challenge, okay? I feel a, a tug in my spirit, and I, I feel that God is, is leading me to, to speak what I'm going to speak about tonight. And the challenge is, is that I don't want it to come across the wrong way. What I want it to come across is, is that somehow in the things that I'm going to say, is that somehow you'll just recognize a hunger. That's all I'm looking for. It's just that you'll recognize a hunger that's within me and, and would identify with that and something would rise up in you and say, I, I feel the same way. That's all I'm really looking for tonight. And so um, somewhere between my words and the things I say, you know, just, just make sure that you're, you're just grabbing the hunger that I'm, that I'm ministering from tonight. Book of 1 Samuel chapter four and verse, uh, 15. Now Eli was 90 and eight years old and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he that came out of the army and I fled to day out of the army. And he said, what is there, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people. Thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. It came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell, and this is speaking of Eli, fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck break, and he died, for he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel for 40 years. Now this time, the, Eli was the high priest. Judge, he would be a type of what later would come about as a king. He was God's man for leading Israel. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and she travailed for her pains came upon her. About the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, and neither did she regard it. She named the son Ichabod. 
saying, the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God is taken, was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. I want to, by the help of the Lord, just to, just to share with you my heart in this subject, the title, Resisting Ichabod. Resisting Ichabod. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that you do a great work here tonight, not because of me, but because these are your people. This is your church. God, I feel your anointing tonight. God, I pray that you help me to get out of your way and let you do what you want to do in this place. God, speak to your people. Bring correction, instruction, God, and bring direction in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Would you lift up your voice right now in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not going to be lengthy is my plan, but don't let that just say to you that that means that this service is not going to be lengthy it would be wonderful if i were able to share with you what i feel led in just a few moments and then something took place in this house tonight that there were people that would linger in the presence of the lord and make some 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 mid-course corrections some adjustments get back on track where you really need to be in the name of the lord in jesus name in Jesus name you may be seated I um, as you can tell I'll put it into words but I, I am I'm deeply moved I'm bothered I um, I'm concerned on many many fronts through the years there have been nations that have risen to greatness and um, and then later, sometimes a few hundred years, some a thousand years or so, and then they have fallen. There was a time that they had great glory, and then there what came a day that that glory was was taken. And consider Babylon, the ancient Babylon, the glory of that ancient Babylon was great. It was, it was powerful, and yet it departed. Isaiah 13 in verses 20 through 22, it lets us know that there was a word from the Lord that said that this Babylon, when it, it would fall, that it would never be inhabited. It said that wild beasts would, would live there in, in the desert, and the satires would dance where Babylon once existed. Syria, ancient Syria, was a nation of, of great glory, but its glory departed. And then there's Greece and with Athens and all of the, the historical buildings that we have just pieces of it today. Socrates, and Aristotle, and Plato, and, and, and others in, in that ancient Greece was just a great nation. Rome, the Roman Empire was, was, was powerful. It had great glory, and then there came a time that Rome was, was conquered and its glory faded. And, and so it is in our, in our text. We, we are reading about a time in which a nation that had experienced great glory, it was in a mess. And Eli, the, the high priest, uh, was not fulfilling his duties as he should have as a father because his son Hophni and, and Phinehas had, had just done all kinds of evil acts and they were priests but they were not living as they should have been. The summary of their lifestyle is given in an introduction in 1 Samuel 2 and verse 12. It says that Eli's sons, they were, they were um, they were messed up. They, they had no regard for the Lord. They, they were wicked. They, uh, they did wicked things. We know from Leviticus chapter 7 that Eli's sons, that they took a three-pronged fork and they ate whatever meat they brought out of the pot 
when sacrificing an animal, and this was the sacrifice at the temple, and, and they, were, they were, uh, were, were taking of it in ways that they were not supposed to because the law for the priests was that they were commanded to eat the, the breast and the upper thigh of the animals, but that's not what his sons were, were doing. And then we know from 1 Samuel 2 and 22 that Eli's sons were sleeping with the women who were, were dedicated to the service of the tabernacle. And this was against God's law for forbidding adultery. And Eli, a, a good man, was a passive father, and he did nothing to hold his sons in, in check. And, and so things were not as they should have been. They, they were messed up. And, and when then we get to our text, which is 1 Samuel chapter 4, and it doesn't let us know why Israel and the Philistines are going to battle, but it does let us know that they had gathered for battle, and they went to battle, and in that battle, the Philistines got the upper hand, and they killed some 40 or 4,000 uh, Israelites. And the Israelites' response was, was simple. They said, why has the Lord defeated us before the Philistines? They, they understood that for some reason God was, it was involved in this, and they said, why has God defeated us before the Philistines? But they never really took time to, to focus on the, the answer to their question. They never really took time to, to zero in on getting a, a response. Instead, they automatically assumed that they had the answer, and the answer was that the Lord calls them to be defeated because the Lord wasn't present with them in battle. His, his presence was locked away in, in Shiloh at the tabernacle, so their solution was very simple. They said, let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So they understood that God's presence was tied to the Ark of the Covenant, this, this box that served somewhat as a movable throne or a footstool of the Lord. And they thought that if we bring the ark with us into battle like a lucky rabbit's foot, then we will defeat our enemies. And now, in times past, God had, had shown up and, and helped them in the time of, of battle, and they just assumed he would do it again. Now, never mind that they did not ask him for direction. Never mind that they did not go to prayer. Never mind that they did not do, go to God and say, God, make us right, make us pure, make us holy. We repent for all the things that we have done before we go to battle. Instead, they bypass prayer, they bypass getting right with God, and they immediately go to, well, if I can just get his presence in the midst of this battle, then I'm going to be victorious. And now you can see why I'm a little nervous earlier about what I'm preaching right now. But the nervousness has left me. <laughs> and, and I'll just jump ahead and be just as plain as I can be. If we think that we can enter into praise and worship and get God's presence in the midst of our battle and somehow we're going to be victorious and we're going to bypass prayer and we're not going to get our hearts right with God and we're not going to stand before the Lord lifting up holy hands, then we're going to enter into some, some battles that we are going to lose. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so they sit for the ark like pulling out a lucky rabbit's foot. The magical thing to be victorious. I'm sorry, y'all, but I, I, I warned you earlier. I, 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 I'm talking about a spirit that is amongst Christians in, in America today because we got songwriters who write some good songs, but they don't give us everything that we need. 
And there's some good songs like, like somehow that my praise is going to win the battle. And there, there's some good things in that song, but there's something else that's also needed. And that is if we don't enter into battle with holy hands. If we go to war thinking that we're going to get the box and somehow bring it out and win, we're fooling ourselves. Hallelujah. Well, that's what they thought. We bring the ark with us into battle. We're, we're, we're going to win. And, and so they, they, they got the ark and they brought it into battle. And, and sure enough, there is Hophni and Phineas, Eli's sons, who are right at the front bringing this ark into battle, and it, it did exactly what they thought. It struck fear. The Philistines said, oh, no. They, they got the ark of covenant, and, 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 and their, their God is strong. He, he's mighty, and, and they start trembling. But there's a problem. They didn't turn and run. Instead, they said, you know what? He, he, he's, he's, that, their God is great and, and he's powerful and, 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 and they were, they were scared, but they begin to encourage one another. They said, you know what? Let's go, let's go be men. Come on. Let, let's, let's, let's be men and let's fight. And so they did and they slaughtered 30,000 Israelites. But that's not all. They, they captured the Ark of the Covenant. And, and, and at this point in time, the news of the battle is being sent to Eli, and it arrives at Shiloh where Eli the priest is at, and he's old, and he's quite overweight, and, and he gets the news that his sons have been killed in battle. And then he gets the news that, that the Ark of the Covenant has been Taken and Eli falls backward and he breaks his neck and that's not all. His daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, she she hears the news. She goes into labor. She dies, but before she takes her last breath, she names her son and she says, "Call him Ichabod," which means the glory has departed or where is the glory? It's gone. It, it used to be here. There was a day that we had the glory, but the glory is no more. There's a day that we had the glory. Notice she didn't say, name him something that meant that the Ark of the Covenant was gone. It wasn't about the box anymore. It was the glory was gone. I shared this this morning just for a moment, a brief moment. But about a week and a half ago, and I don't listen to a lot of preaching on YouTube, or I just, I, I like the silence. I, I actually, the older I get, the more I love silence. I don't just like it, I love it. My, my family calls me the noise sheriff. I don't understand people that text on their phone and they have the, the, the thing turned on where it click, 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 and I'm like, can I get an amen right now? I don't get that. I'm like, turn that thing off. And I have family members that look at me and they go like, something's messed up with you because that should not be bothering you. And I was like, you, you should not have that thing on. I mean, there's no need for it. And uh, so I, I'm the noise sheriff. And now I have absolutely no idea why I am where I'm at right now with the noise sheriff. So I'm listening to videos. Thank you. So I'm listening. I, 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 don't, I don't listen to videos. I, I, like, I like a little quiet. So, but my, my niece, my, my sister Tammy and, and her daughter, my niece Annika, is getting married this next spring. And so my brother-in-law, Todd, he at COVID, and so she's in nursing school, and she's about ready to graduate, but she can't miss, so she comes over and stays at her grandparents' house, my mom and dad, so she's there at the house, my mom and dad are there, and then my nephew is at college at Urshan, he 
is home because one of his roommates got COVID, and then he came down with it, and he's over it, and that they're over at my grandparents' house, and we're sitting there at the house one night, and someone said something about different preachers and said something about T.D. Jakes, and they were like, who's he? And they, they didn't know. So I said, well, here, let me find one. I said, let's get an old one. Let's, let's find an old one. And, and I said, so I started looking for this real old one I had seen years and years ago. And I couldn't find it. And I just randomly clicked. And I don't know, maybe 40 minutes into the sermon. It was a two-hour sermon, y'all. So, you know, I mean, you need to be thankful, Pastor says. Uh, it was a two-hour sermon. And so I, I just clicked somewhere random. And we watched about 10 minutes of it. And those 10 minutes... The Lord started just speaking to me, dealing with me. And later that night, just a couple hours later, everyone's gone. And, and I, I, I'm in my room. And I couldn't get away from it. And I thought, well, you know, check out the ball game. Check, get on Facebook. Do this, do that. And, I, and I, I, I had these thoughts. And then I thought, no, no. And then I... No. And then I just stopped and I said, God, and by the time I started talking to the Lord, tears just started flowing. I started praying in the Holy Ghost. It went for a long time. Just something just rising up inside of me. It's just simply saying that I don't want to return to normal. This is what I think some people are looking for. They're waiting for COVID to get over so we can get back to normal. I don't want to get back to normal. I don't want to go back to normal. Is anybody here with me right now? Ichabod. Glory, it's gone. I've stood before the Welling Wall in Jerusalem. I remember going in to Jerusalem. It was late. We checked everything in the hotel. Turned around a couple of preacher friends I had met from California. We said, hey, let's go to the Welling Wall tonight. Went down and stood in front of the Welling Wall. One o'clock in the morning. I'm praying. The Wailing Wall is believed by the devout Jews to be the Western Wall, the Second Temple of Jerusalem. It's the only surviving structure of the Rhodian Temple during the time of Herod Agrippa. This would have been 37 before Christ and, and 4 CE, the first century of the, of the BCE, and it, it was destroyed by the Romans in 70. Stood there. At the time it was built during this time, it seemed like it would last forever. But this is what Jesus said in Mark 13, 1 and 2. Jesus answered them and said, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another thou shalt, that shall not be torn down. Great buildings, magnificent stones, but to his eyes, they were nothing more than ruins because the glory had long departed. I read the seven churches of Revelation. I've wondered so many times, how is it that these churches cease to exist? The church of Sardis, Jesus said unto the angel of the church of Sardis, which was the pastor, write these things, saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works, and thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceas, write, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would if thou were cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Churches that were once on fire. I stopped just as simply to say, and I won't be much longer. I love America. I've been places where we can't do what we're doing here tonight. I'm thankful for America. But America is headed down a road that there's a great possibility if God 
does it do something if, if things don't turn, things don't change, that America as we know it today won't be like this 30, 40, 50, 60 years? I don't know. I don't know how long the Lord's going to tarry. I don't know how long it's going to take. But all I know is that there have been nations that have risen and nations whose glory has departed. And just because a church is on fire for God doesn't mean that a church will always stay on fire for God. God forbid, God forbid that POK would ever become a church that's not on fire for God. So what is, what, what is the answer to resisting Ichabod? What is the answer to not losing the glory of the Lord? Samson said, I will go and do as I have done before. But the scripture says that he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. I, 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 I'm, hoping that I'm, I'm hoping that my words are, are, are making sense, that you understand what I'm saying. It's not enough just to keep doing the same things we've always done. Just, just I'll, I'll get up like I did before. I'll get the ark like we did before. We'll, we'll go forward into battle like we did before. God will show up. I say this. With all kindness that I can say. But POK is a great, great place where there's a kaboom on Sunday night and we have praise and worship and it's 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 so good. But at the same time, I stand here tonight, I'm scared. Because some of you I've just gotten so used to coming to church on Sunday night and somehow getting your praise on and thinking that you're going to win your battle that way, but you walk back out, and on Monday, your heart's not in tune with the Lord, and on Tuesday, it's not in alignment with the Lord, and on Wednesday, it's not where it needs to be, and on Thursday, it's not... It's not there and on Friday. It's not there and on Saturday. Then you walk back in on Sunday and, and oh, it's Sunday church time and I need some victory. So somebody get me the ark. Bring me the ark. Let's make some noise. Come on, let's make some noise. And it doesn't take long that we will join in in making noise because we have learned that if we make some noise, that God will show up. But if we're going to resist Ichabod, if we're going to resist the glory departing, it's not going to be because we came together to make some noise. It's going to be because that when we came together in the worship, our hearts and our lives were being transformed. We were lifting up holy hands. Our lives were in tune to his presence on Monday and on Tuesday. And we were living right on Wednesday. And we were, we were trying to do what was right on Thursday and, and Friday and Saturday. And when we walked in here, we wasn't calling for the ark because we left the ark behind. But we walk in here with the presence of the Lord right here because we've been walking with him on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And we don't have to build something up. It's already right here. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship is more than a religious activity. It's more than just making noise. If our hearts are not in it, if we're just going through the motions, if we got used to praise and worship, then, then, then we, we have missed it. We are no longer able to resist Ichabod. But if we're going to resist Ichabod, we've got to have our hearts in it. We've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. 
I'm coming to a close. Ezekiel chapters 8 through 11 tells us of the abominations that were occurring in the temple of Jerusalem. I read through it. It's, it's just, it's grotesque. It's taking place during the days of Judah. And the glory of the Lord was being removed. Before the glory was removed, there's plenty of worship. There was plenty of sacrifices, plenty of religious activity going on. But there was no moral transformation occurring in the worshipers. None. R.T. Kitchen once said, attend church, but do not attend church which prefers science to scripture, reason for revelation, theories for truth, culture for conversion, benevolence for blood, goodness for grace, sociability for spirituality, play for praise, prep for prayer, profession for possession, progression for power, reformation for regenera regeneration, Good for God, speculation for salvation, jubilation for justification, feelings for faith, paralysis for peace, and politics for precepts. <laughs> Wrote that over 50 years ago. And as I read that, I thought that just so resonates with what I feel in my spirit. I'm not interested in playing games, not interested in going through the motions. I'm not interested in replacing scripture with science. I'm not interested in placing revelation with reason. I'm not interested in replacing truth with theories or spirituality with sociability or praise with play or power with progress or justification with jubilation or faith with feelings. I'm not interested. And I'm saying here tonight that there's just something inside of me that has been awakened. I want the real thing. I listened to Jake's preach. I text three of my friends late at night. This is an hour or so later. I just said, I'm just so tired of preaching to ourselves. I'm tired of worshiping our own pr worship, praising our own praise. I'm tired of going through the motions. I said, I just want something that is so real. I know this church wants that. I know there are people here that are hungry for that. I'm encouraging some of you that are just not there right now. I'm encouraging you. I'm, I'm pulling for you. Because just as the glory left the nation and the glory left the church the glory could walk out of your home could walk out of your life and you never realize the fulfillment of the dreams and the callings and the giftings God has placed on your life why not because you didn't make noise I was about seven years old. I hardly ever tell this story. I'll never forget it. I was in JS, Mississippi. I was in the back seat of the automobile. In the front was my, my uncle, my dad's twin. Beside him was a backslidden minister. The back seat was my uncle, was my was my dad. My dad and his twin brother looked at this backslidden minister who used to preach camp meetings all over America. Great preacher. No longer in the ministry, no longer married to the wife that he first married. I'll never forget it. I'm a little kid. I'll never forget it. I knew enough of the story because we were driving to meet him. He was managing a furniture store. And my dad and his twin were talking about the great services and the great messages that he preached. We pulled up. He came out, got in the car. We went to eat. I don't remember anything about that, but I do remember this. They asked him, he said, what happened? He said, funny thing. 
He said, I don't understand it. He said, I was praying. I was praying. I was praying. I was praying. I ended up in an affair. I was praying and lost my ministry. I was praying and lost my home, my family. I was praying. I remember driving away from there and my dad and uncle having a conversation. The conversation went with something like this. He wasn't praying. He was just saying words. He wasn't praying. Never forgotten it. The glory departing is not dependent upon you making noise. The glory resistant. If you're going to resist the glory departing, it'll be because you got your heart engaged in what you were doing. You were experiencing a transformation. True worship, you start experiencing transformation. And the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. And you read on. Woe is me. Unclean lips. True worship brings you to a place where you see him and his greatness. And you see you needing to get an alignment with him. Woe is me. In the name of the Lord, I've done my best to convey what I feel in my spirit. Would you respond to the Lord right now? There's some that already have. Would you find a place, either right where you're at or here in this altar? In the name of the Lord, God, there are marriages that are dependent upon husbands resisting Ichabod. There are young people, God, who have a wonderful future in you, but God, their future in realizing it and fulfilling the calling that you have placed upon their life, God is dependent upon them resisting Ichabod. Oh, God, let their hearts be engaged in it. God, let their hearts be engaged in it. God, may they make their hearts right before you tonight. God, will they lift up hands. God, let it not be just hands that have been doing wicked things, but God, let them lift up holy hands in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, there are mothers here tonight. God, that love their children. But God, their love for their children true love, God, is going to cause them to resist Ichabod, to create atmospheres in the home that is right, to turn off things that shouldn't be, to get rid of stuff that they need to get rid of. God, in your name, there are young people that need to get rid of songs that are on their phones, their playlist. There are young people, God, that need to go to someone, a parent or someone said, help me. I need help governing my time on the internet, what I'm looking at. And God, forgive us, Lord. Forgive me for the times I've ever lifted my hands and I've just gone through the motion and just made noise and my heart wasn't engaged. God, let it come from our hearts. We're getting back to the heart of worship. It's about you. It's about alignment with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. A house of prayer, Lord, make me a house.
Hallelujah. Let's lift up our voice right now. Come on, let the Lord hear you. Make it personal, you and the Lord right now. Oh, God, so revive. God, make me right with you. Above all else, I long to be right with you. I long to be right with you. I long to be right with you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen. Such a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost here tonight. That's it. Just continue to talk to the Lord. Just another few moments. God's reaching for somebody right now. He's calling for somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Wilson, you were in the perfect will of God tonight. I want to tell you that God is speaking to the church. You know, it's possible that we lose sight of what really drives our worship and our praise. To have clarity, we go to the Old Testament. And when we reference fire in a Pentecostal circle, we sing songs like, you know, let the fire fall and power filled with the Spirit and the fire, cloven tongues like fire set upon each and all of our references to fire are connected to our passion for God and oftentimes our worship to the Lord. As they were singing this chorus, let the fire of the altar never go out, I was reminded that, I believe it's Leviticus 16, the Lord commanded Israel, the Levites, that they were, they were to keep the fire going on the brazen altar. There is, a, there is a command from the Lord that the fire keeps burning on that incense, that last piece of furniture that just was situated just outside the holiest of holies. That's where the incense was burned. There was fire there. There was fire over on the golden candlesticks, which represented anointing, God's favor. All of that is fire. But in Leviticus 16, the Lord said, I'm kind of specific about where I want that particular, about where I want that fire coming from. I don't want you just going and lighting the golden candlesticks, but all fire begins on the brazen altar, the place where death happens, a type of repentance and brokenness before God. So as they were singing this song, the Lord just reminded me that the fire on my altar never go out. That means I've got to stay on that altar and just keep burning. I've got to make sure that I stay on that altar of brokenness and just let the Lord keep working on me. I don't ever want to get to a place where I've repented enough, I've prayed enough, I've been broken enough, and, and, and I've got to stay on that altar because every day that I'm living in this world, I'm dealing with flesh. And if I ever let, if I ever let the fire go out on my brazen altar, that place where flesh dies, then I have nothing to fuel my worship or my anointing. Amen. I got to keep the fire burning. The fire of brokenness burning. There was a prophecy given uh, over 100 years ago, I guess uh, uh, several, uh, a little over 100 years ago at Azusa Street. And the prophecy said that before the Lord comes, that there would be a generation of people that knew how to praise, but did not know how to pray. Amen. I pray to God that that does not describe this church. We've got to, we've got to learn how to pray. Amen. Amen. It doesn't feel good for the flesh, but once you get into that place of worship and, and that place of brokenness with God and that place of prayer, it, it, you ever been to a place in prayer where, where, where time just sort of disappears? And you could just stay there for hours. But before you pray, if you feel like, I don't have time for this. I feel pressed. I got a task that I need to complete. But you break through that place. And it's just like time stands still. I could stay here for hours. I believe that it's important that we visit that place every day. Stay before God. Stay on the altar. Amen. 
Praise God. If it's been a long time since you fasted, try to fast at least something every day. Every day. Try to find at least one thing. It might be a second helping of food. It might be a dessert. It might be something you wanted to do. But try to find something to fast every day. Amen. Let's keep our hearts right before the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you, this was the will of God tonight. God's trying to speak to us as a church. Amen. Our experience with God has got to be more than great music. We got great music, but it's, it's possible for us to depend on music to get a breakthrough. If I can just get to Sunday night, I'll be okay. But that's not how revival was born in this church. It was born through prayer, getting a hold of God, brokenness before the Lord. Amen. Sacrifice. Amen. I wonder if we could stand to our feet. I want us to lift our hands and let's just one more time. Let's call out to the Lord. Let's ask him to bring revival, not just to our church, but to us as individuals. Search our hearts. Come on, make it personal with the Lord right now. Oh God, above all else, we want to be right with you. We want to know you. God, we want to know you, Lord. We want to know you, Jesus. Draw, God, we need you right now in our lives. We need you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what we feel here today. I want to challenge you to find a time of prayer every day, every day this week. If you can, try to, try to pray first thing in the morning. Before anything else, just spend time in prayer every day. Amen. Throughout your day, take time, still away with the Lord, and, and take time for prayer. I believe that God will be with us. Amen. We want to be a revival church. Let's keep the fire burning on our brazen altar. Amen. 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 Again, thank you, Dr. Wilson, to all of our guests that are here this evening. Thank you for being here. And uh, remember all of our announcements. Men, we need your help. I just want to remind you... Uh, it won't take very long, about 10 minutes of your time. If we have enough men that will help, everything will be taken care of. All you have to do is come to the front, and uh, Brother Korea, who's, who's directing? Brother Korea will direct you what to do real quick. It will only take a few minutes, but uh, together we can, we can take care of this super quick. Young men, especially all of our youth and uh, our men, if you could help us out, we'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God. Again, you cause your sun to shine on darkest nights. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. All right, gentlemen, we're going to...